So today we are going to be doing our July native plant garden tour. We've got lots of nice things to share with you this month. And bonus, I got some evidence in my filming of a new creature that's visiting my garden. I get really, really excited about all of the new creatures that are coming into the garden just because I have these new native plants growing here. So I'm very excited to show these to you now. Let's get right to it. Thank you so much for watching. So I'm about a week early from when I was planning on doing my videos, but I wanted to show you evidence of my beautiful service berries. I have had a few berries, not very many, probably like, I don't know, 20 or so, but I just wanted to show you before they got gobbled up by my hungry little two-year-old who seems to think she can just help herself to these. But yes, check it out. We have beautiful berries. There's another one here that's not quite ready yet. And I got a third berry over here so not as wonderful and exciting as a ginormous service berry harvest but i do have evidence that we did get beautiful berries this year now i did get a bunch that kind of went kind of dry and crispy before we could even snag them so not really sure what that's indicative of if anyone out there has any tips on growing service berries please be sure to share them in the comments I love learning from you all and again we can all learn from each other so share your tips and help me get an even bigger harvest next year thanks so much Here's our Scarlet Bee Balm. It's looking really, really good. Last year it was only a couple of these stalks and now it's got this whole little patch over here. Now, right now we've got a whole bunch of stages of the bloom, so I thought I would show them to you all. So this is how it starts. And then a couple of these little petals start popping out. It starts getting a little bit bigger. And then there's one over here that is looking really, really nice. And then we've got this double bloom happening over here so right here there's the bloom down here and then you can see there's another bloom starting so that is just one of the cool features of this plant you can get two blooms in one very very cool also quick tip for you if you deadhead this plant after the first set of blooms you might get a whole new set later on in the year here is our obedient plant. Now this plant has really struggled this year because we've had such a dry start to the year. So I've really had to water it more. You can see that it's kind of like opened up down here in the center and started to kind of lay down a bit, but it is still holding on strong. And you can see that we have a lot of blooms that are going to be coming. So I'm going to look forward to that soon. Now this plant, when it's in bloom, is just a massive pollinator magnet. But already you can see that there's lots of action happening. I've got a ladybug over here. Where are you? There you are. I've got a couple of those. There's another little pollinator flying around. I've got some beetles somewhere hiding. Here they are. They're taking a look over here and playing around on the obedient plant. And then coolest thing ever is I'm pretty sure that I have evidence of leaf cutter bees. Take a look at these leaves. Is this not the coolest thing? This little circular pattern here is indicative that there may have been some leaf cutter bees that have come over, chomped off the little leaf bits and then put them in their nest. Now I have a bee house and I have a whole bunch of evidence in there too so I would love to catch them in action but have not yet but yes very excited that this plant has got so much attention so far and it hasn't even started blooming yet. Here's our little bee house you can see that we even got some action going on right now. Is that a leaf cutter bee? Help me ID this little bee. I've got some green in some of these little holes so I'm thinking that perhaps that might be where the leaf cutter bee has put some of the obedient plants. So very, very cool. I love seeing these things being used. Look. Oh my gosh, did you just see that? I saw it, it brought something in. Oh my God, I'm so, so super excited. <laughs> I caught them in action while I was doing the video. How perfect is that? So here we have our smooth blue aster. Now right in the center here, we've got a bee balm sprig that clearly did not want to be moved when I transplanted another part of this plant. So it's going to try to steal the show, but we do have some smooth blue aster over here. Last time, last month when I posted this video, I asked what I could do about making this look less spindly. And so someone suggested the Chelsea chop, which is just kind of taking the top off of the aster and helping to perhaps 
focus its energy on developing more branches and make it a little bit more bushy. So we'll see how that goes. I did that on a couple of these sprigs, not on the one over here. I left this one and you can see that it's got a whole bunch of flowers that are forming. So hopefully this plant is happy over here. As I've said before, this is kind of looking like a spindly part in my garden, but that's okay, giving it some time to establish itself. Here we have our narrow leaf vervain and we actually have a little visitor there, some kind of little pollinator. If you know what pollinator that is and you can help identify it please let us know in the comments i always love learning from everybody so this is our new native plant here in our kind of part sun part shade garden and you can see that the flowers have bloomed from the base to the tip so this has already started blooming all down here and now it is in bloom more near the tip so it will continue to bloom all the way to the very tip. It's a really pretty little plant with these tiny little lavender flowers, which I think are just super cute. And even though they're itsy bitsy, all the pollinators like to come and visit too. Here's our pussy willow plant that we propagated from a cutting last fall. It is doing really, really well. It was pretty sad earlier in the year, but as you can see, we've got this whole new shoot here. This branch over here is clearly just done. See, it's just snapped right off. There's definitely no growth happening there. So there we go, clean that up during the video. And then, yeah, it's about two and a half feet tall now and it's looking really, really good. Very, very happy with this propagation from a cutting last fall. And hopefully this is just gonna do great in this part of the garden over time and really, really hoping for some catkins next spring because we didn't get any this year. Over here we have our young swamp milkweed. This is a new plant that we sowed last year in the fall. And we've got something going on over here. What is this? What do we have? So I think, oh, we have aphids. There they are. So yes, we've. it looks like we've got some aphids here. And some people think that these are just the worst, but they are a food source to ladybugs and probably lots of other creatures too. So I'm just gonna leave those be and let nature kind of take hold and maybe the ladybugs will come and visit over here too. I just wanted to show you the difference between the milkweed that you just saw and then the milkweed that I had left in pots to share with friends. So look at the difference in size. These ones are quite smaller. So if you're thinking of keeping your little seedlings in pots, this is a good evidence to show that when you move them into the ground or into a bigger pot with moist, more soil, more nutrients, they are going to get bigger. So this is doing fine. I'm still going to pass this along, but just something to keep in mind. Here we have our wild columbine. The flowers have all passed and now we have lots of seed pods forming. The seed pods are actually just open. They're just open like this. Sometimes seed pods are closed and you have to kind of crack them open. But these ones are just open. You can see that there's seeds down there and you can actually just tip them and out come the seeds. So they're these black little seeds. And then if you want, you can either keep them and pass them along to friends or put them in other places in the garden, or you can just help the plant out a bit and put them exactly where you want them. Otherwise the wind might take them and they'll get eaten by a creature or sorts, but I want lots of columbine in this part of the garden. So I'm just gonna put them right there. In my last video, I asked the question, what are these little tracks that are in the leaves right here? And one of my lovely viewers has informed me that these are from what's called the Columbine leaf miner. And that, that this is not actually a harmful pest to plants. Some people do consider it a pest and they try different ways to get rid of it. But as long as it's not causing a problem in the garden, I'm happy to have it here. I am not about pesticides whatsoever. And I'm all about building biodiversity in the garden and learning more about the little creatures that come to visit. Here we have our heartleaf foam flower still looking really, really good despite the hot and dry couple weeks that we've had. As you can see in the back over here, we've got some pretty sad looking black eyed Susans and some dry feet on the flocks back there. They're clearly not pleased, but this is looking fine. We have a couple of these dry stalks from the stems of the flowers that I'm going to clean up. And I tried to look for seeds and they are very hard to find, but you can find them in the little leaves here. So if we go in close, there's the leaf. And if you just rub it, you can kind of see, see there's a little seed there. So 
that's how big these tiny little seeds are. I'm hoping that I got a lot more than this one, but either way, I'm going to put him into the ground so that maybe he'll make some more partly foam flower for me there. So now I'll just tidy up this plant a little bit and get rid of some of these crispy stems just to make it look tidy in the garden. And I'll just add it down here. So it just adds to the mulch. So we are in our shady garden and this is the Canada anemone. The flowers have all passed and now the little bloom heads are starting to develop seeds. So we are gonna keep an eye on those when they go brown and dry and crispy. Then we're going to collect them and move them, plant them in a different spot in the garden, which I'm thinking might be back there where the fern is because it's a little small and it's looking a little out of place. So we're going to switch spots. This one is about two to three feet tall right here, this Canada anemone. And so it's kind of out of place as well. So we're going to do a little switch later on in the year. Here we have our Solomon seal and it's still looking really great despite the heat and the dry conditions we've been having. It has flopped over a bit and next year I'm going to put some stakes around it or maybe a tomato cage to help it stand up a little bit better. But it still does give some height to the garden, especially in these shady areas. Here is our one little trillium plant. It is still green. It's still kicking around. It's not looking too happy. So I'm not expecting it to stick around much longer, but that's okay. It's an ephemeral plant. So I wasn't actually expecting it to be here at this point in the year, but it's still green, still bringing energy down into its bulb. So we will let it just do its thing. Here's our fern. It is definitely not pleased. I think it would like a lot more water than what it has been getting. It's gone kind of crispy in spots and there's still lots of green left so it's still hanging on there but it definitely would like way more water than I've been able to give it and it has just been just such a dry year which has just been unfortunate for the plants. I think everybody's been feeling the same way here in southern Ontario but it's still kicking around so I still have hope that this guy will do just fine over the years. Here we have our New England Aster. It's about five feet tall or so and not in bloom yet, but we have a little bit of time for that. And I learned recently about the Chelsea chop, which is taking the tips off of plants like asters and then encouraging them to kind of grow more bushy. So I did that. You can see here the tip there that it's a little brown because I clipped off the tip there and I did it in a couple other spots. And then to compare, I left some just as they are. So we will see if this has any impact on how the plant grows over this season. Oh, we've got a little friend here. Who is that? Oh, a kind of spider, I think. Oh, a couple. Look at that. This is a busy plant. I also have some other critters here that I was going to ask my lovely viewers for advice on. What do you think I have here? I've got these tiny little black critters. Not sure if you can get a good look in there, but if you can see these little guys and tell me what they are, then I would like to know, are they something that's beneficial for this plant or are they possibly causing a problem? So just let me know. I'm interested to learn. Here's our butterfly weed. It's looking quite lovely despite the dry and hot conditions that we've been having recently. This is such a great plant for just letting it do its thing. I hardly have to water it and it just flourishes. We've got tons of action going on here. I've been watching for monarch eggs but have not found any yet but lots of little critters are enjoying this. I don't know if you can see any in the video but I can see lots of tiny little pollinators buzzing around. We'll get a close-up for you of the flowers now too. Here's our prairie smoke. It is still looking lovely and green and has probably doubled in size since I first got it and planted it last year. This is our golden Alexander. I just planted this last month and it's already making baby leaves look way down in there. See, they've got some babies down in there. I really don't know if it'll bloom this year because it was just transplanted and usually plants are pretty angry about that, but we will just keep a watch out and hope that we might get some blooms, who knows. Over here by our log, we've got our little blue stem plant. It's about doubled in size since I planted it this spring from a little plug that I got from Reap Green Solutions. It has kind of like a frosty bluish green tinge to it. It's really quite pretty and it's going to get much larger, but right now it's this cute little plant over here by my log. 
So this plant here in the center is the lance leaf coreopsis and it is clearly stretching. I wanted to take a picture from this angle so that you could see how it's clearly leaning right over. I thought that this was going to get enough sun here in this part of the garden, but clearly not quite so much. It is leaning right over. So I'm going to try to find it a new home where it might get a little bit more sun. It looks like all of the flowers have passed. We'll get a little close up for you in here. So there's the flower heads right now, and then we'll wait for it to develop seeds. We'll collect our seeds and then share them with friends so we don't just have a forest of lance leaf coreopsis because we already have another little baby over here and another one over here as well. So here are the seed heads from our daisy fleabane. All the flowers have passed, and now we have these super cute little puffs. And these puffs have itsy bitsy tiny seeds in them. See if you can see them. Can you even see them? Look at they're so tiny. And that's why they're so easy to volunteer in other people's gardens and why you find them in random cracks in your concrete and such. They're so tiny, they just make themselves at home anyhow. So you're welcome world, here's a whole bunch. And we're actually gonna transplant this plant because it is a little unhappy over here. It was leaning out towards the road because this is right in our boulevard garden. We're gonna move it somewhere where it'll be happier, where it can be held up by a stake or other plants as well. Cause this is about three feet tall right now. Here we are in our boulevard garden again, and we've got our wild bergamot. It is all in bloom now. It's super happy and it is great for this part of the garden because this is as tall as it'll get. It's about three feet tall right now. and We don't want anything that's going to be obstructive to the traffic at all. So perfect for the boulevard garden, happy in the sunshine and attracting all sorts of pollinators as well. Here's our cardinal flower all in bloom. It is looking so spectacular with these bright red flowers. Just gorgeous. This is the first time this has bloomed for me. So I'm pretty excited and it looks like I might get a couple more too. The plant is telling me that it's dry. So it is a wetland plant. It will want more water than the rest of the plants in my boulevard garden. But this is showing me that it is saying, please water me even more. So I'm definitely going to have to soak this guy every time I do a good watering and hopefully he can be happy here in our boulevard garden. Here we have our wild blue lupin. Last month we had some beautiful blue blooms all on these three spikes here. It was just gorgeous. Right now it's pretty angry. You can see that the leaves are kind of going brown and crispy and starting to turn a little yellow. It is saying, why on earth have we not had water this month? It has rained so infrequently, it has been killer. We've been watering it as much as we can, but it's just not quite the same. Anyhow, we've got some seeds growing here, all sorts. So I'm really, really excited about that. I'm hoping to collect a whole bunch. And I have been informed by one of my fellow viewers that I better be quick on this because they do open up. The, the pods actually unfurl and then can drop their seeds. So if I wanna collect these, I better be on it quickly. So I'm gonna wait for them to go brown and dry and then I'm gonna do my best to collect them before they all drop. But even if they do, I would be very pleased to have lots of blue lupin in this part of the garden. Here we have what I was formerly calling evening primrose, but this guy apparently, as per one of our helpful viewers, is not actually evening primrose. It's actually another another variety of native plant called sun drops. Um, this guy only gets to about two feet tall or so, whereas the evening primrose plant is apparently quite larger. So either way, this is what this guy is looking like now. His flowers have all passed and we've got some little seed pods forming here. So if you can see that in there. So we will see if we can collect some seeds and if not, they can just drop here in the Boulevard garden. However, I do have to say this plant is definitely not pleased here. It needs an awful lot more water than some of the other plants in the Boulevard garden. So I might have to move this to a spot where it might be a little less dry. Here we have our prickly pear cactus. This is in our boulevard garden as well. 
and it seems to be doing quite fine. I do see a hole in it or two holes right there. And then this guy over here, I'm actually wondering if any of you lovely viewers know if he's going to be happy enough right here. He only has a little bit of soil and so I'm wondering if perhaps this isn't the best spot for him. I know it looks really cute, but it is starting to kind of go a little bit like a lighter green, almost a yellowy color down here. So I'm a little concerned about him. So if you think that I should move him, help me out let me know. I think I might have to over time, but look at how cute it looks in my rock. Anyhow, we'll leave him here for now. Little update on my itty bitty seedlings. This is my wild columbine starting to develop. It's gonna find a home in the garden very soon. And then we've got the spotted bee balm down here. I had a pot of what I thought was cup plant, but in my last video, my viewers were kind enough to inform me that no, not actually cup plant. It was a wild sorrel plant. So got rid of that. So that's not gonna be in the video any longer. And then this is our false blue indigo. Also from our kind viewers, I learned that this is not actually native to Southern Ontario. It's native to South of us. So, I mean, it's not as bad as some other plants that might be from other parts of the world. So hopefully it'll still provide some benefit to the pollinators around here, but I won't be including this any longer in these native plant tours. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video interesting and helpful. How cool was it that I actually caught the leaf cutter bee going right into the bee house while I was filming. I was so excited about that. Really glad I caught that and I was able to share it with you guys. So thank you again for watching and feel free to follow along and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Got lots of videos coming up. We'll be doing these native plant garden tours all the way into the winter. So lots more to come. Thanks again for watching.